Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Shino, and we are back in our Edu world. And this is going to be a little different episode than what we normally do. This is going to be more of a behind the scenes. So, are you the kind of person that can keep a secret? I hope so, because I'm going to kind of show you how I go about creating a build palette. But first, I think we need to play hide and go seek. I'm going to count and you go hide. Ready? One, two, three. So one of the first things I try to do when I'm working to create a build palette is I want to focus on what the local materials look like. So once I've found an area that I like, I want to look at those local materials and say, okay, how can I use this in my build? Um, when you're building kind of organically, you know, just kind of as the game goes, you don't have a preset idea of how you want things to look or what kind of build style you have. Kind of like when, you know, unlike what I've done in um, the Rusty Gear server where I've actually picked a building and said I want to build this and I'm going to go find those resources and bring them back to the build site uh, and then create what I want. Uh, in this kind of series we're going to be building more organically meaning that we're going to be using the area and the terrain and the resources that are in that immediate area a lot like a person would if they were um, settling there for the first time. So one of the first things you want to do uh, when you have found an area that you like and you're going to be building in it, you want to start kind of evaluating what your local resources are. You want to get a look and see, you know, what kind of woods do you have available? What kind of rock do you have available? Uh, what are some of the other uh, items that you can use like berry bushes and flowers? Um, that's going to play a very important role in what your build palette's going to look like. Now, if you're playing a game style where you already have kind of a building in mind, uh, kind of like I did with the Rusty Gear server where I've got a building that I like, um, and then I create a list of stuff that I need to go find and bring back to the build site. Um, those are good for like, you know, specific builds, but if you're in a world like what we're gonna be doing in this one, um, where we're gonna be kind of creating a, a storied line, um, we're going to have to be more organic. Uh, our build style is going to have to be, uh, here's the resources we have available. Okay, so let's see what that would look like in kind of a real scenario. Um, this is the Edu world that we're in now, but this is a creative copy of it. So I just got the original save file, made a copy of it, renamed it, and we've gone into it in here in a creative world. Um, this is going to allow me just to kind of demonstrate some of these uh, without impacting my normal game, right? So let's take a look. Let's say, for example, we found this area right here and we're like, hey, uh, this is the cast we want to build in this area. So now we're going to start looking at the local uh, materials that we have available and deciding what our build palette is going to look like. So right off the bat, let's look at our woods. You can see we have pine in this area. We have birch. Uh, if we come down over here, we'll see there's some maple. Um, so that's the three primary woods we have in this area. And we might be able to find some oak in here someplace. Might Don't think we'll find any walnut unless we move farther out. But in this area right here, those are the resources we have. As far as rocks go, we can see we've got slate. And we can see we've got granite in the side here. Um, but we also have slate sand as something that we can build with. And then as far as the flowers go and the plants, uh, we can see we've got a few berry bushes that are kind of scattered here, there, and everywhere. Uh, then we have a lot of flowers in this area that we could use for decorating with. I'm sure if we dig around, we'll probably find some ferns that we can use. Uh, these are really nice, the red top grasses. Uh, really enjoying those. Um, but as we're seeing these local resources, one of the things that you're going to notice is that some of them are more prevalent than others. So for example, we can see we've got a lot more slate than we do granite. So more than likely, whenever we go to do this build, or we were to build in this area, uh, we'd probably be using more slate than we would granite uh, and, you know, in the build. Granite may be an accent piece, whereas the main foundation piece would be slate. Same thing with wood. We do have pine, uh, and we do have birch, but it seems like we've got more 
of the pine than we do the birch. So if we're going to build, we'd probably be using pine as the main building block and probably use birch as the accent. And so that leads me to secret number one that I want to share with you. And that is look at the area and decide what could be with the resources you have. So another thing you want to consider when you're building your block palette is realize that just because a block is of a certain block type doesn't mean it has to be used for that block type. What I mean by that is in a normal building you probably would not want to build walls out of sand. That just doesn't make any sense. But sometimes there's textures that you need that you can't get from the surrounding block types. So normally would you go to build a wall, you may build that wall out of plaster. But let's say you need just a little bit of a yellow fleck or a little bit of a brown to it. Well then that might be a good situation where you want to look at sand as a wall. And I did that in shenanigans as well when I'm building my house. I found that using some of the sand that I could find worked really good uh, for a textured wall look. So another thing that you want to consider when you are creating your build palette is not just to think about the colors that you want but also to think about the textures that you want. There are certain times when you want a particular look um, and you may not get that out of a quote unquote typical block. For example, uh, we all know that building with wood for building your timber frames and for uh, showing strength and stability to a building, that's a good thing. But what if you wanted something more industrial what if you wanted to chisel, say, slate and give it more of a brown tone to it or more of a, of a rust color to it? Those are times when you want to look not only at just the block type, but maybe just really focus and look at the texture that you want and then build using that texture. It's going to give you a better feel and it's going to end up with a better result. Yes, at the end of the day, you're going to know you have a, a wall that's made out of sand. But do you really? does it really matter? Uh, if you're getting the look that you want, isn't that what it's all about? But look at this, for example. Let's say you're wanting to build, you're wanting a building that is going to give you more of an industrial look to it. Using something like slate or chert that you can chisel back will give you the opportunity, will give you the look of a more rusted or industrial look to it. Uh, now, you probably wouldn't want to build a factory out of sand, but if you're getting the look that you want, I think it's worth it. And really, that brings me to secret number two, which is use block textures, not just block types. Another thing to consider when you're building your palette is you may put in all the effort, you may follow all these steps, and you get what you consider to be a great palette, only to find out that under certain lighting conditions or in certain weather patterns, it just doesn't work. It gets muted or becomes too bright or too overpowering. And so you want to make sure that you're checking your palette in different times of day and you're checking them in different weather conditions just to kind of see uh, what it's going to get. Uh, a good example of that would be if you're building in water like we're going to be doing with the fishing village and you took a log and you, you use a primary log for a support structure say for a dock or a bridge. If you look at that in the real world you'd see that you know a log that's been sitting in the water for a long period of time when it gets waterlogged it changes color. Uh, but in these games, in these block games, a lot of times when we put logs into water, they're going to look the same underwater as they do above water. Being able to, to realize that and see what the logs look like in a wet condition uh, can go a long way in helping you build some realism into it. So for example, in this little spot right here, 
we're in a covered area and we're just looking at granite. And if you look at the granite up close, you can see you've got the reds, you've got grays, you've got blues, you've got some yellows and some tans. Uh, when you're looking at it out here in the sun, a lot of those colors kind of disappear. They really pop and you can see like the white spots on the blocks that kind of form that you don't see down here because this has been, has been um, bleached out. But in here, you can actually see those colors. So checking and looking at a block texture when you're trying to figure out what it is you're wanting to do. Look at that block texture under different colors or under different light levels. And you may be surprised at how you can take and incorporate that into your build. And that brings me to secret number three. Check your palette at different light angles. All right, so let's kind of put this all together. So here in my creative world, I, this is where I like to test stuff out at. So I take the world seed, make a copy of it. Uh, I actually spawn into the game, make a copy of the map. And then I can take that copy of the map and I can try different kind of build styles, uh, different ideas of how I want things to go. But the starting part of it is starting with a build palette. And here you have the build palette that I've created for this village. So in this build palette, I've gone around and looked at all the different resources that I can find within a very short distance of this location. For example, muddy gravel, slate gravel, slate sand, granite sand, which is just right up over there. I uh, made some slate cobblestone so we can kind of see how it goes together. And then I've also taken and put together all the different logs into a nice long palette. So I've got the oak and the maple. And the pine and then you see I alternated again with some more maple and pine and then the pine and the oak so what I've done is basically I want to be able to see what does the oak look like with the maple next to it and what does the oak look like with the pine next to it make sense and the same thing I want to see what the maple looks like against the pine and against the oak so that's why I've created it this way, so I can kind of get a good feel of how these logs look next to each other. On this side of it, we've got the same thing going on, but now we want to look and see how do these textures work together. And I can look at these from up close and under different lighting conditions now. I can knock out the torches, I can add torches, I can wait for a different type of sun. But I can sit and I can look at these against each other. See along this line right here? I can look and see how do these work? Is that too much of one shade, not enough of another? Let's say I want to back it up just a little bit and look at them in this perspective and say, oh, hey, you know what? The maple and the slate kind of work together when you add in the muddy gravel. Or I can look at it and say, well, how's the pine look against the maple? Or how does the oak look against the maple? See? Just taking an opportunity just to look at the different colors. And then when we talk about depth, we're talking about creating depth. We want to see what do things look like when they overlap. So just kind of create and put down some trap doors to kind of give me an idea of to see how things look through. So when I go to create depth, I can see, oh, yay, you know, that works really good when you're looking at, um, you know, this uh, with the granite behind the trap door and you've got that that depth that you're looking at there with a little bit of shadowing you know that looks really good together um, now some of the blocks you may not think about being in this area are blocks that you can create like the packed dirt or the different type of fences that we can do and now since I'm talking about this village and I've been talking about how this village is probably not going to be really modernized so as far as tools go and, and how they can build stuff, they're probably going to be pretty basic on their fences. So, you know, if I wanted something more elaborate, I could always go in and pull up like just the normal pine fence if I wanted to. And drop it down here just to kind of see how it works with these kind of textures too. So there's nothing that's limiting you from saying, oh, I can't build with that. It's your build. Decide how you want it to look. So this is one of the things I've done to create kind of a palette. Uh, and that's what the palette is for this area that we're going to be building in. So everything in this area 
is going to be coming from these resources that we have available right here. And as we look at what we have in the area, we can see we do have a pretty good amount of oak. Uh, we've got a pretty good amount of maple. We've got the pine that we've been harvesting and replanting in this area. Um, we've got large, like I said, large amounts of oak. We've got large amounts of maple. So that's where our build palette's going to come from. And then, as I had mentioned, when you're looking at how blocks react in the environment, and let's do this just as a demonstration. Oop, didn't mean to break that one. I wanted to break that one. So you can see we've got oak. You can see how the oak is in the water and the oak is above the water. This is a great effect uh, when we're talking about you know how the blocks react. If we were to take, for example, the maple and see how much darker that becomes, it's very noticeable when you don't have anything else out around it. But if you look at it here, see how that creates that darker look uh, having the maple underneath the water. So that's why I like when I'm looking at this area thinking, oh, you know, I want to make sure that when I go to put the logs in the water, let's make sure we use maple down there. Now, if we go into, if we're going to be doing some chiseling over here, then it might not be a bad idea to do a combination block so we can bring the, the, the water line look like it's kind of moving up into the log. Might be kind of cool. Just thought about that. So that's what we're going to do. Now, as far as the actual build that's going to be here, probably not going to look just like this. Probably be pretty similar, though. But you see here, I'm just kind of working more on, you know, fitting it into the environment. Is it going to fit in the environment? Is it going to uh, provide enough space for what I want it to do? Is it going to take up too much space? That's what I was doing with this build. All right, folks. Hey, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for spending time with me. Next episode, we're going to be building the little fishing village. And you're going to want to watch that because we're going to actually do that from start to finish. Uh, I know usually when I'm doing my builds, I kind of cut out, but we're going to actually go from step to step to step while we build this. And I'm going to give you a chance at the end of it to add your input on some things that we can do a little different. All right. Appreciate you spending this time with me, and we'll see you next time. Take care.